concern over loyalty, over trust. That has been at the center of every immigration wave in the history of our country. At what point do we say immigration is good for us? At times of economic anxiety, today or back then, there's always a pushback. When the unemployment rate in our country is below, say, 5-6%, immigration is, is not an issue. When the unemployment rate begins to climb, the debate over immigration becomes they're stealing jobs, they're taking jobs away. When, in fact, economists have reasonably established that immigration generates a very uh, vigorous surplus to the U.S. economy. We hear complaints about immigration from different sections of the country. Our southern border towns obviously very upset about it in, in many ways. The solution to our immigration problems in the 21st century is not going to be the control of the border. Today, unlike 100 years ago, education will play a much, much more fundamental role in the making of new, new citizens, new workers, uh, new Americans. Citizens who can function in more than one language, who can have uh, insight into uh, cultural practices, business practices from other uh, parts of the world, will give huge advantages moving forward. The question is, do we as a country have the energy that it takes to take on that challenge? Or have we given up on the shining light that Lady Liberty symbolizes to the entire world. Joining us to talk more about where we've been, where we are going, Professor Marcelo Suarez Orozco. Also joining us, David Shirk, director of the Transborder Institute and associate professor right here at the University of San Diego. And once again, actor, activist, and co-founder of Voto Latino, Rosario Dawson. Uh, Professor, we, uh, when we were out at Ellis Island, I believe I heard you bring a reality check and a debunking too much of what we've heard here tonight. On the crime issue, it, it, it's hard to describe to people how suspect the Irish were as an immigrant population in relation to crime. In fact, in Boston, when they appointed the first Irish police officer, there was a protest about that officer saying, his name is Bernard McGinniskin, you can't make the Irish uh, police officers, it would be a cultural conflict of interest. They're, they're criminals. That was the phrasing that was used. We've heard all of this before. What does our history tell us about what we've been through in the last hundred or more years with this subject? What does it tell us about where we're going? Lawrence, what history tells us is that um, the rate of immigration has remained relatively stable. In fact, contrary to the heated temperature and the heated nature of the debate today, the rate of global migration has remained at roughly 3.2, 3.5% of the entire global population. The rate of immigration in our country today is lower than in previous waves of large-scale immigration. When the, uh, when the Irish, when the Eastern Europeans, when the Italians um, were coming in huge numbers to our country, the proportion of immigrants to the native population was substantially higher than it is today. So in a way, we are a country where immigration is both our history and it is also our destiny. Moving forward, even if there is no more migration into our country, the fastest growing sector of the U.S. population comes from the echo that immigration generates. It's through the children and the grandchildren of immigrants. So, been here, done that. <laughs> we need to lower the temperature and we need to let the better angels of our nature guide what is obviously a difficult conversation. It was a difficult conversation then, 
it is a difficult conversation today. Professor Shirk, you study the transborder issue here. You're living on this border, which is kind of a laboratory and possibly something uh, that looks like our future. What is this country going to look like in 2050? It's going to look very different. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming to this global laboratory, San Diego and Tijuana. Uh, San Diego, America's finest city. Uh, thanks for coming to <laughs> talk to America's finest students uh, who are all right here with us today. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, the, I, I think that America is going to look very different uh, because of the current wave of migration. Uh, not, it's, it's not about undocumented immigration. We have a very large Latino population now. As that population continues to grow, we're going to see the face of America change. Uh, the, the nice thing is that every new wave of immigrants makes America's face more beautiful. And I think that's what's going to continue to happen once we get past this sort of ugly phase of, of those tensions between cultures and uh, different groups uh, start to ameliorate maybe in about a decade or so. But Rosario, the next decade is going to be tough. Rosario, does that history give you any encouragement? I mean, to see that we had other populations, the Irish and others, go through uh, the same kind of negative reception that people are getting coming across our southern border now. Well, that ends up being kind of part of our conversation that we continue to have of people coming up and um, saying, well, it's just the Latinos' turn in line to get yelled at. But, you know, the thing that, you know, the, that we can go back to always is our own passions, is our own personal history. For me, I was raised in a squat in the Lower East Side in an abandoned building. My parents, being as tenacious as they were, said, I will put in heat, water, and electricity and move out of this slum apartment so I can at least have an opportunity to provide for my child more than I can now. Now, when the, the squats were taken over by the city, all the rhetoric in the newspapers were saying that they were taking so much money from the city and that that's why we had to get rid of these squatters. These squatters fought back against a tank an actual military tank that came down 13th Street. Then, when they're fighting back with rocks and urine, and there's helicopters going and SWAT, those empty buildings ended up being watched with 24-hour police surveillance for four years. That cost the city millions of dollars. And it's one of the things that fuels me right now. We do not always hear our history even when it's happening correctly. That's what's happening right now. We are, these elections are being flooded with lots and lots of money, and they're buying people's votes because there, these the elections are decided by a couple hundred, couple thousand votes, and in, when that happens, it's the person who's going to feel the most comfortable going in to vote and has been talked to the most, and that's usually going to be a lot of Latinos and people who are feeling um, antagonized and they're not going to vote, and then a, a bunch of people who are going and driving to the polls because of fear and anger. And so you have a very small group of people who are deciding our history, and that's why it's so important to get young people to be part of the to, to be a part of this decision making because they're the ones who are inheriting this country. They're the ones who are going to lead it out of its trillions of dollars of debt, and they're the ones who are going to have to deal with getting a home, health care, and education in this climate, regardless of the color of their skin. We're going to have to break it there when we come back. Final thoughts on the immigration debate and where we go from here. Welcome back. I'm joined again by Maria Teresa Kumar, Professors Marcelo Suarez Orozco and David Shirk, and actress and activist Rosario Doss. And I want to go to the front row to Frank Sherry. Uh, Frank is the, uh, runs an organization called America's Voice. It's an organization focused on communications and media in the immigration debate. What do you think, quickly, Frank, gets lost in the, the way the media treats this issue now? <clears throat> We mainly focus on, is there a problem, when we all agree there's a problem. We don't focus enough on what's the solution. We talk about comprehensive reform, we need to define it. It combines strong enforcement at the border, cracking down on bad actor employers who engage in illegal hiring, and giving people here who are illegal and not criminal a chance to become Americans by meeting certain requirements. Then you've got to reform the immigration system going forward so we have a 21st century system. That's why two-thirds of the American people want it. And quite frankly, the only thing that's lacking is the political will to do what the public wants. Maurice, uh, with Voto Latino, you are certainly trying to get Latinos to the polls. It's a nonpartisan group. But what is, what is the impact you expect in, in a larger, if you could get a larger Latino turnout? 
Well, I think we're, 2012, everybody's trying to figure out how to win the 2012 election. You need at least 44% of the Latino vote, and we need to change the rhetoric. Lawrence, we all recognize that a perfect bill no one's going to be completely happy with, but as Frank said, it's broken. And I think that's what we heard from Mike Cutler, and that's what we heard from Gas is that it's broken, and we need to fix it, and we need to tone down the debate and actually have a conversation and fix the problem. And when we talk about 12 million undocumented, we're talking about 4% of the population, right? And it's not just Latinos. It's, it, it's South Asians. It's Chinese. It's, and we have to bring them into the conversation and humanize it, because at the end of the day, if we don't humanize it and we keep talking just statistics, we fail ourselves as, as Americans. Professor, a lot of misinformation flows in these conversations. Uh, what can we do in the media to try to keep the dialogue within the bounds of reality? Lawrence, to paraphrase Harry Truman, immigration is too important to leave it to the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We need a national conversation. We need a rational national conversation. And I applaud you for uh, beginning what will be a, a process of re-encountering, rediscovering the fundamental essence of what our country has stood for in the eyes of the world over the last 200 years. The opportunities, the fundamental human agency that gets mobilized when people pick up to join a society of consent, a society of laws, a society of rules that welcomes newcomers. Germany today has a real immigration headache. Most of the issues we are contending with are issues that, with good faith and with a mature, rational engagement from the political class, we can fix. No American politician will say what the German chancellor said two weeks ago. Immigration in Germany failed. Immigration in our country has not failed. We invented the computer because of an immigrant. We developed the basic medical technologies for the bypass because of an immigrant. If you Google to, your, to find your well, way Google's to UC immigrant. San Diego. We're, we're running out of time. Uh, Rosario, I just want to get a quick final take from you on, and what your takeaway is from this discussion we've had here tonight. I believe that we, this is, it's a really healthy thing to get more people be a part of this conversation. It shouldn't just be politi politicians who are having this conversation outside of us. And we need to take it, not only and have it in our homes, but we also need to take it out. We need to march to the polls and make sure people really hear us. Because once again, when you start talking about and going well, in this past election, you can see in the midterm election, there's a rejection of this and moving towards that. Again, you're talking about just a couple hundred or a couple thousand people making these votes that are determining our history. And if you want to see what real people, every single day have done in this country, read the people's history of the United States. <laughs> and it's not just about people who are in pol political um, standings that, were, that really are talking about what American values are. Sometimes American values are really separate from what's actually happening in our politics. So people, please we, uh, join. And our, our professors Thank have you. books to sell. <laughs> yes. uh, and tonight, of course, Maria <laughs> Theresa Kumar <laughs> will get yeah. the last word. Go ahead, Maria Theresa. The Teresa. last word. Ooh. I think, and I think the, what most importantly is we have to recognize that this is an opportunity that is before us, an opportunity to actually modernize our immigration system, bring in the best and the brightest who consent to come here. They're not for it, they consent to come here and build off of that so that we can continue being a force to be reckoned with in the 21st century. I want to thank all of you for participating tonight, especially our guests, Maria Teresa Kumar, my, uh, my partner here on the program, and thank you. Uh, for joining us here tonight on the beautiful campus of the University of San Diego and of course you out there in television land watching. As you know, the immigration debate has been part of the American conversation for a couple of centuries now. Of course there is much, much more to say and we're going to make sure that all sides continue to be heard right here on MSNBC. Good night from San Diego. <laughs>